Hello everyone, in this short video I'm going to show you step by steps how to make a beautiful sourdough bread. So let's get inside the kitchen and start prepping. So we start with cooking potatoes. 90 grams of peeled potato, boil it until nice and soft. Starting measuring the water. Uh, this is gonna be two loaf recipe, so I'm using double amount. So I'm going to use 580 grams of water. I'm going to use sourdough starter, which is Italian, called Levito Madre. I would like to use 100 grams. Ninety-nine, ninety-nine point five. Once we put our sourdough starter in the water, we're going to dissolve the sourdough starter completely into the water. It should take approximately two, three, four minutes. So I fully dissolve the sourdough starter in the water. And it's got a nice white creamy color. So now we're going to weight the flour. I'm going to use the beautiful bread flour from a David Sambacher. Absolutely love the flour. I know there is already one kilo so I can just add this one to the water with the sourdough. So we can start combining the flour and the water together. When it looks like like this, I'm going to use my hand now. I don't have a mixer, so I do all my baking and mixing by hand. So this is the technique I learned from someone else. It's, it's from edges of the bowl into the middle. At the same time, keep the other hand free to turn in the bowl and just fold it into the middle this is how I do my pizza as well and we're going to need it for approximately 4 to 5 minutes once you've got it nicely combined looks like this at the moment turn it upside down cover it and leave it rest for 10 minutes to develop the gluten structure by that time our potato will be cooked and chill so then we can use the potato by the time we're waiting for the potatoes I wait the salt I'm using the fine sea salt 20 grams for the one kilo of flour and uh, for the smaller, so a single batch, I'll post the ingredients in the comment section. It passed 15 minutes. So at this stage, our dough looks like this. Now we can start adding the cooked potato. We're going to use half and half. We add first half and we will mix it. What I always do, I spread the potato into the dough and press it with the finger like you would do a focaccia. And now exactly the same as I show you at the beginning of the video, we're going to start kneading the dough from the side to the middle. trying to combine the potato with the flour all together. Once I feel it's combined, then we add other half. Most of the potato is in. Now we can add the other half. We 
again spread it on the dough press it with the finger and again carry on kneading knead approximately 3 to 4 minutes before we add the salt 4 minutes now passed the dough is getting the consistency now we add the salt that's the reason why I keep this hand always clean so I can always add the salt press it with the finger again and carry on kneading for another 2, 3, 4 minutes at this stage the dough will become a little bit sticky because of the salt and the potato is still not fully mixed so don't worry about it, just carry on mixing it will be fine after a couple of minutes So five minutes now passed. Now we're going to stretch it and fold it, which would get even more gluten structure. So I highly recommend to dump your finger with the cold water. Okay, it's done. You take the dough. The first one will be sticky. And you slap it and fold it. Slap it and fold it. You do this one a couple times. And again, cover it and leave it rest for five minutes. While we're waiting for the dough, we prepare our Benetton basket. I'll be showing you two different methods. So first one will be the Benetton and the second one will be the ball. So use a little bit of the corn stretch into your Benetton and use the brush to spread it nicely around the old edges so your dough will not stick I prefer this one instead of the flour because the flour absorbs more water or moisture so in this way your dough will never stick rest of the corn flour I use I've got my bread towel and I'll just add the rest of it here and I make sure the cloth is covered with the corn stretch. This one is ready for the dough. Past five minutes, we already got the Benetton already prepared. So we're going to do fold and stretch like this. We develop the gluten structure so it's stronger, so it holds the shape. Take a little bit of the dough. I'll show you 
while we resting I'll show you this when do you know your dough is ready for baking it's a simple solution with not a lot of people know it's called sourdough clock what does it mean take a glass of jar like this put the rubber string two on the glass now we, we, we take a little bit of the dough so we kind of shape him into the bowl yeah make sure the bowl is the same size as your glass just rubber band for the height of the dough the second rubber band adjust a double of the high from the first one so how do we know when the dough is ready the basically the dough is ready when it double the size once we keep this glass close to the benaton so if it's gonna be at room temperature we will keep it next to it if it's rising too quickly you can add the dough to the fridge but we will also add this one to the fridge so it measure exactly the same how the dough is rising once the dough rise for the second rubber it's ready for baking so this is the sourdough clock now we can carry on shaping this one so we can do again folding and stretch and now we will do the final shape I'll separate the dough in two approximately how you do the final shape put your fingers like this put it under and just slide take the dough place him other direction and do it the same and again and again you can see how it become harder finger on the board and just slide it it's stretching the top of the dough to become more stiffer so when the bread rising and when you cooking it holds the shape and it grows nicely up in the oven so from this one will be the round one I can feel how it is now beautiful now we've got our bowl use the scraper turn him upside down and place inside now we're going to do the other one do exactly the same But this one I'll be shaping lengthway because I'm going to use it into the Benetton. But first I'll make sure I nicely stretch it. Once I feel the tension, now I'll stretching the shape I need. I'm pretty happy how it looks so I'll take the scraper upside down straight into the Benetton it is very important to cover the Benetton with the foil so it doesn't dry out I'll post the picture in the video the size of the Benetton I'm using which is designed for one kilo of bread so because we use 500 grams of flour that should be ideal size for the Benetton you can also use 600 grams of flour but the dough will rise up so at the moment we're going to cover it with a clean film I'm going to use the rubber band to put it around the Benetton so this line is nice and covered we also add 
the foil into the, our sourdough clock. And always keep this one next to your dough. Now with the last one. And they are ready for resting. Usually it depends on your sourdough, it might take from 12 hours to 24 hours. Just keep eye on the clock. If the dough come close to the second line, just place the dough into the fridge because the fridge will slow the fermentation and the dough will grow much slower speed, like in the room temperature. And we will get back tomorrow before we start baking. I'll show you the sourdough clock and I'll show you the bread. morning everyone it's Saturday morning nearly nine o'clock I'm preheating the grill to 230 degrees Celsius with the heat deflector and a pizza stone on the top uh, my dough is nearly ready my sourdough clock showing me I'm nearly on the second line where I need to be I kept the dough six hours in a room temperature nine hours in the fridge and in the morning at 7 o'clock I took out the dough in a room temperature so I can bring it up to the second line where I need to be. So this is how it's looking the sourdough clock. So pretty shortly we start baking. Temperature on the grill is 220 degrees Celsius so I can start prepping the dough. I'm using the baking paper which will be easier to slide on the pizza stone. So now we can take carefully out the dough, but better would be to use it this way. And beautiful come out because we used the corn scratch yesterday. Now we're going to score it. It's really important to make the score with a sharp object. Preferably halfway with 45 degrees angle. To make the bread even prettier, I'll decide to use the scissors and just cut a little bit off on the top. I'll use the bread on the other side. one from the angle and this is our bread we can place the bread into the grill don't forget to use water on the bread Water and steam is very important. We close the lid for two minutes, then we spray it one more time and we carry on cooking for 30 minutes. Two minutes passed, we're going to spray it again. Now we can let the bread cook in. 30 minutes now passed since we put the bread into the monolith. So now it's time to take him out. It is always important once you finish baking your bread to spray it with the water. The crust becomes softer but still crunchy. Let's use the paper, this is the bottom part, nice and hollow, beautiful. Let's use the paper for another bread. We 
make the two scar and it's going straight into the barbecue don't forget to spray it with the water and close the lid two minutes spray it again and after two minutes 30 minutes of baking and 230 degrees celsius until the bread is done now our second loaf will be ready i'm keeping a little bit lighter color on this one beautiful loaf Don't forget to spray it with water. This one is already cooled down. I could be able to slice it and show you how the bread looks. So let's place this one down. Let's give this one to cool down. And let's slice this one. The bread should rest at least 45 minutes before you start slicing. This is how our bread is looking. The smell is absolutely amazing. So this was the video step by steps how to make the sourdough bread and how to bake the bread in a monolith.